loss of a loved one is probably one of the hardest things we humans have to go through. But you might be surprised to know that we're not the only living beings to go through this kind of grieving. Today I'll be showing you how animals say goodbye to the dead. You'll be surprised to see that some animals out there actually have feelings and go through a process as painful as the one we go through when it's time to say a final goodbye. With all that said and done, let's begin, shall we? Our first entry is... Elephants. It might not seem like it, but elephants are highly emotional animals. If you remember my video about animals saving people, I talked about an elephant that saved a little girl during a tsunami. This goes to show that they have emotional skills that enhance them to respond just like humans do. In order to find out more about their feelings, a researcher named Karen McCombs spent a lot of time observing and documenting the elephant's behavior. She came to find out that elephants have a very long-term memory. She recorded sounds of elephants before they passed away, and months after their deaths, she'd played the sounds for other elephants. She was impressed when she found out that the elephants responded to the calling. They surely remembered their missing elephant even after a long time since their passing. McComb also noticed that elephants have a lot of interest in carcasses and skeletons of their own kind as well as of others. Once they find bones of their kind, they stop and become tense, as if paying honor to the corpse. They even smell and caress the body, as if the elephant is still alive, which shows how attached they can be to one another. Once they are ready to say goodbye, they'll likely cover the dead with sticks and dirt, which is their own form of burial. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take five seconds to complete. So here's the deal. You just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works. Our next entry is Giraffes. In order to understand giraffes, we first have to look at the neonatal bond that happens between the mom and her calves. This period can last as long as 16 months, which is quite outstanding compared to other animals. And the bond between daughters and mothers can possibly be stronger and could last years beyond those first months of bonding. Now, the sad thing about this is that giraffe calves have a high mortality rate. The chances of losing their calves falls between 58 to 73% of probability, which is quite sad. But if this were to happen, giraffe moms become very nurturing and protective over their newborn dead calves. They will stand guard over their little ones and will watch over them hoping that no wild predator comes and feeds from it. I know that there are some different kinds of animals that don't really care for their dead, but it seems like these brave mothers endure a lot of pain and it doesn't seem like they have it easy at letting go of their little dead calves. Our next entry is Dolphins. A lot of people try to stay away from exploring emotions in animals. No one really wants to assume that they can have the same feelings as humans. However, Joanne Gonzalvo of the Tethys Research Institute came to find out that animals can display strong emotions as well. He focused on dolphins, and starting in 2006, he witnessed how these intelligent animals have their own way to mourn their dead ones. The first thing he saw was a mother dolphin struggling to accept the death of her newborn calf. She kept pushing the little corpse up to the surface, even though the calf was already gone. She never separated from it, which goes to show that she had a hard time accepting its death. A year later, Gonzalvo observed a pod of dolphins swimming erratically as they were trying hard to help a three-month-old dolphin stay afloat, but it kept sinking. Eventually, the little dolphin died, and the group kept going with their lives. Gonzalvo believes the dolphins have a higher understanding of their mortality. The dolphins were aware that the little one was going to die soon, but they did what they could to help out while he was alive. Our next entry is Orca Whales. Just like dolphins, orcas also have a hard time at letting go of their dead ones, especially when it comes to their babies. Such is the case of L-72 and L-105, two orca whales that were spotted off the coast of San Juan Islands in Washington State. The mother kept pushing her dead baby for about six hours, and every now and then she would lift it out of the water. She was also seen with the calf balancing on her rostrum or on the top of her head. Apparently, the baby orca had not been dead for long. It's unclear whether the whales were having a hard time giving up their little one or not. After all, we can't project our human emotions onto animals. However, I doubt it was an easy day for these whales. They are very smart animals, and I wouldn't be surprised if they experience pain in the same way that we do. Our next entry is magpies. Have you heard about the mirror test? It is a technique that was developed to determine which animals have the ability of self-recognition. Surprisingly, only a handful of animals were able to pass the test, and all of them were mammals, except for the Eurasian magpie. This is a small bird that is quite intelligent compared to others. For that reason, it shouldn't surprise us that the bird is also capable of feeling grief and even performing its own version of funerals. 
After some observation, experts came to realize that magpies would step closer to the corpses, gently peck them, and then step back. Then, they would fly off and come back with some grass to put by the side of the dead one. This is so similar to the way that we bring flowers to people at the cemetery. We don't speak magpie language, and we don't need to to understand what's really going on inside of them. But actions are louder than words, and I'm sure all of these things are a way to let others know that they're grieving the loss of their loved one. Our next entry is Wolves. Something I admire about wolves is the way that they're always together. Lonely wolves are not common, they're always part of a pack. For that reason, it doesn't surprise me that they experience sadness whenever they lose one of their members. When a wolf passes on, you will probably see the rest of the pack walking with their tails and heads held low, which, if you're familiar with canines, you will know is a sign of depression. They then stop howling together as a group, and instead each of them cries in their own way. This grieving process lasts for a few weeks before they start to go back to normal. This phenomenon was noted by Jim and Jamie Dutcher, who spent a lot of time observing wolves. They witnessed how the mood of a whole pack of wolves changed when they lost a low-ranking Omega female wolf named Motaki. It's said that the wolves were depressed, and the wolves would get sad every time they walked near the spot where Motaki lost her life to a mountain lion. Our next entry is Otters. Otters are usually solitary animals, however it seems that they also respond to death in a very touching way, and there is an example of that. It's a story of two otters named Lewis and Isla. These two arrived together at the Scottish Sea Life Sanctuary back over in 2008. It was evident that they were inseparable since the very first time they saw one another. For that reason, the center performed a little wedding ceremony for them in 2011. They would groom each other, look after each other, and even sleep next to each other. Contrary to their solitary nature, it seemed like these two paired up for life. However, tragedy struck them when Isla was taken to the vet after refusing to eat. They found out she had a lot of health issues, and they had to end her life to keep her from suffering. Back at the center, Lewis kept looking for her, waiting for her to come back. He even kept himself from swimming on her side of the pool. It took him a while to get used to his life after Isla's death, and probably no other otter was able to take her spot in his life. Our next example is sea lions. It seems like mourning doesn't only happen on land. We already saw some birds and also dolphins and whales who have shown some emotions, and here is another one that might surprise you, the sea lion. Scientist Mark Bekoff published a book about animal emotions, and in that book he wrote about sea lions. He explains how mother sea lions feel when they see their little ones getting attacked by predators. According to his observations, these mothers have a very eerie squealing and a pitiful wailing that comes as a result of watching their pups being caught, tossed around, and eaten by killer whales. Other animals are numb in the midst of this sad scenario, but sea lions react in the same way that a loving human mother would do. And now it's time for the day's best pick. The pictures I chose for today are very touching. We have two animals at the top of this list that say goodbye to the dead in ways very similar to ours. Let's have a look at our next entry, the crow. If you ask me what I think about crows, I'd say that they are quite scary and yet majestic at the same time though most usually associate them with dark things, such as death. However, when you look at these birds, you'll find that they're quite intelligent and very caring about one another. When it comes to their death, it's been observed that they perform their own version of a funeral. It might not be like the funerals that we humans do, but it definitely has some meaning. Kaylee Swift, a PhD candidate at the University of Washington, did an experiment in Seattle. She started by visiting a park full of crows, bringing peanuts for them so they could gather and eat. One day, Kylie visited while wearing a creepy mask and holding a taxidermy crow in her hands. All the crows in the park gathered around and started making all sorts of sounds, as if warning about the dangers of the strange person and their dead fellow crow. After that, Kylie went back to perform her regular visits, without any mask or dead crow in her hands. She brought peanuts and the birds came to her to eat, but it would take them longer to feel confident and grab the food. Days later, she came back with the creepy mask and the birds began to make noise again. They definitely felt threatened by the version of Kylie that introduced them to the dead crow. This experiment shows that crows are intelligent, and they certainly perceive death in a way that is different to most animals. Our last entry is primates. Chimpanzees, orangutans, all sorts of monkeys and other primates have shown signs of grievances at the loss of a loved one. This actually makes sense since, after all, all those animals have a lot of features with human beings. Jane Goodall has spent a lot of time describing how chimpanzee mothers carry and care for their dead infants. And other experts have observed different kinds of primates cleaning corpses, lamenting the dead, and even avoiding areas where they lost their loved ones. 
There's even a video that shows a group of monkeys lamenting the dead of a robot monkey who they thought had gotten hurt. Overall, this video did make me quite sad, but I suppose having feelings is part of being alive, and it's relieving to know that humans are not the only ones who experience intense emotions, such as grieving. Have you ever seen an animal grieving, or do you know about other animals that were not included on this list? Let us know in the comments section down below. With all that said and done, I will see you all next time. Later, everybody.